And we're live. Welcome, everyone. This is Pine Leaf Needles, and you are listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro. And here at Lotro Players. And this week, we have with us Andang. Hey, everybody. Atheros. Uh, hi. Draculetta. Hey, everybody. Sithrith. Hello. And our special guest this week is DJ Pimp Daddy. Uh, tonight I'll actually be going by my alt, Braxwood. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Yes. Brax is not here this week so that he could come as his, <laughs> as his main DJ Pimp Daddy. And I guess <laughs> our first question this week is, where did you get a name like that? Man, uh, I actually used to be in a parody hip-hop band. Uh, about seven years ago, and we we performed. Uh, it was it was, I literally imagine two white guys doing bad uh, rap music, and we kept getting paid for all these stupid gigs to go up there and you know make idiots of ourselves. And so my screen or my stage name was DJ Pimp Daddy because I was I was like the MC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then I, I mean once you get such a fantastic name like that in Gmail. You just can't get rid of it, so. I guess that is true. Very well. Now, could you tell us how you got s left rap and got started in pro <laughs> and in our gaming community? <laughs> well, uh, the long story, uh, summed up really short, is that, uh, you know, I... I started my, my gaming way back in, like, the Magnavox Coleco days, uh, but... I truly got into gaming with the, the Nintendo, uh, and then of course, all the way through the, the Nintendo 64 days. Uh, gaming on computers, my parents actually purchased a TI-99 4A home computer back in the day. Taught myself how to make games in basic. Uh, it was pretty pretty crude, let me, let me tell you that. <laughs> And then I, I think my, my crowning achievement was my, my father and I on the Texas Instrument. We actually beat the uh, the text version of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, if anybody can remember that. Oh, yeah. I Oh, yes. I remember that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, we didn't beat <laughs> Without it. Without any got hits? To the very, yeah, we got to the very end of the game. And uh, it like you had to choose a red button or a green button, and uh, we chose the wrong button. <laughs> 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 yeah. It, it was it was terrifying because I mean like you were, I was like nine you know, <laughs> it's like my dad just sitting here reading all this text to us and Let's see, letting us the choose button, the paths. You know I can't remember the red button versus the green button bit. His last bit I remember is choosing the right is trying to find the right piece of equipment for Marvin and of course you can't do it without seeing into the future. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean that that was like so long before like wiki pages and stuff. So yeah, there was like no concept of even dial up on a computer that old. So <laughs> well, yes, you got it. you have a point with that. That's yeah, um, I remember Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy quite well. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that, that was, that was, I I found an emulator online. I've been like, man, if I had just enough time, I'd probably replay it. But um, my parents. Uh, one of them was a teacher, so every summer we got to bring home an Apple IIe computer. So, yeah, I, I taught myself a little bit of programming on that. Later, we, we became a Mac home, so I played a lot of, like, Might and Magic 2. Uh, and then, skip further, further ahead, uh, my first, like, multiplayer game that I think was almost on par with an MMO for me would have actually been um, Neverwinter Nights. Uh, a friend and I made a persistent world, and we had a 30-server slot, and it was constantly full, like 24 hours a day. So I taught myself uh, to program and script and see, and I we just made, you know, quests for that all day long. So I sort of have, I have feelings towards the devs when I see all the, <laughs> when they say, you know, they put out a new skirmish, and there's like one little bug. I'm like, oh, I, I feel bad for them for that. All right. you, I have you, done that. You wrote all that stuff in script? Yeah, it was a C script. Um, <laughs> the, uh, and it's, 
it, it that was an amazing experience because between that and running a Minecraft server, it really taught you to go beyond like QA testing. Like it, it you got to the point where you spent you, you spent all this time putting out something that you're really proud of, like a quest or a quest line or something. And then you immediately see how people exploit it. And you're just like, oh my <laughs> lord, why didn't we think of that? You know? It's like, we saw this one guy uh, backtrack and he brought this uh, bone dragon. He actually co coaxed it, uh, like he, he aggroed it, he coaxed it and carried it all the way across the entire world and left it in the starting town in our server. And I'm like, oh my god, you know. So people would spawn in, and there's this bone dragon just wreaking havoc everywhere. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I mean, it's stupid things like that you don't think about. Sort of like so, the Yavok and the turtle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think Minecraft was when I first got into uh, podcasting hardcore. Um, I helped a friend build up uh, this week in Minecraft. Uh, and then, of course, you could listen to Brax's podcast for that whole tale. Uh, but later on, when I went to, got into Steam gaming uh, for Late Night Steamer, we did, um, how I got into Lotro was through, we did one episode with a, a, a joint show called Geek Culture Happy Hour. We played Lotro for a month, and then at the end of the month, um, this was like right when Steam had just released Lotro on, um, you know, it's the free to play app, you know, um, at the end of that month, we did a, an episode where we all talked about the fellowship of the rings movie and the Lord of the rings. And we compared the two in one episode and it was like three and a half hours <laughs> and it was way too long. And like, we were wiped by the time we got done with that episode and we, we, we joked about doing, you know, the two towers and keep going. But then it was like, no, that was too much. <laughs> so, and then everybody else left Lotro after that, who was on our show. And I just kept playing and it's been like three years now. So I'm only three years into Lotro, and it's pretty much been my only true MMO this entire time, you know, besides some multiplayer games. So awesome. that's, the, All right. that's the short story. That's the short story. <laughs> yes, and you can hear can... the long story at your show. <laughs> uh, no, you want the long story? Go listen to Brax's. <laughs> go so listen nine. to Brax's version, yes. But she's too busy recording right now, so that, oh, I thought you were Brax. <laughs> I'm that good. <laughs> ah, yes. You're that good. All right, very well. Let's go into the game news, even though there isn't much. And the most important one was put up, well, since it was put up by, by Brax, I guess, I guess DJ Pimp Daddy can talk about this story. <laughs> <laughs> about the tweet of the mysterious Bjorning like image. Oh yeah, yeah. They 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 Lotro uh, their, their their Twitter feed, they posted this uh small tiny unscalable picture that you can't zoom in on too well. Uh and they got the Bjorning uh character on one side and you can see him got it in game on the on the left screen but I, I like when they posted it i just started tearing the picture apart about everything else that was in the picture except for what was actually on the screen so <laughs> that's where my, <laughs> like i was pointing out like the white castle cup the ecto one in the background and the ecto one <laughs> was the most important part i mean i know on. indeed <laughs> So that's actually, to be honest, that's the first thing I saw. I'm like, they have an Ecto one on the desk. Sweet. <laughs> I would exactly. have to say though, too, the Atlas of Middle Earth is pretty cool that they got that there too. I, I assume yeah, that you know most of nice people at Turbine book. do, but it's a really yeah. cool book. Well, um, that would be useful if you're making a game on <laughs> the subject. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So assuming that this is uh, the Bayorning, from that image, it does make sense that. Um, the Bjornings their own race, I think, because they definitely look like a lot tougher, you know, um, more sizable man, probably a lot taller, too. Um, so it kind of makes sense that Turbine's making them their own race, even though they are still the race of man type thing. It almost looks um, like he's holding a 357 Magnum in his right hand, if you look at it close <laughs> enough. If you, um, if you oh, scroll right down hand. in the oh, article... I, guess I thought it was a pick of some sort. It, it does look more like a pick. If you scroll down the article, it looks like he has a <laughs> hat and a pick. Or an axe and a pick. 
Um, and also a hat, but um. That, that, yeah, that's because he he couldn't find a pickaxe, so he had to get one of each. Uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> really, finally, really. I don't know. It, it's possible. Actually, it looks like that the um that that top part of that's a cuff, so it looks like he's actually dual wielding axes, which is pretty cool. So he'd, he'd be like a berserker type person. Well, I mean, technically you can do that with hunters and champions, right? You can, but um, not with like a bulky type character like that. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. It It's interesting. You know, there's not too much that we can get from these uh, images, but um, it is good to know that um, they are at least teasing something about the Bjorning now. I mean, we're we're only like, you know, one or two months away from the Bjorning being in the game, essentially. Part of us in the chat room is saying, so Anding, you're saying he's a fat hunter. <laughs> I'm saying he's a very, very muscular, tall hunter. <laughs> All right. Now, he's anybody just have any... Yeah. Anyone have any guesses on what's on the left side? It looks almost like a Bjorning camp, almost. I'm guessing it's probably because they said there's a intro -y thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that. th that's my guess, is that it has something to do with the intro, and it, there's a lot of fire, so I'm guessing that something happened to burn wherever they are. So oh. Maybe it's a I can't tell if it's scrunch. fire. Well, there's a lot of smoke. I don't know oh, if it's actual stuff on fire. The only um, version of Archit. <laughs> oh, man. <Pretty> that's, <laughs> that would be terrible. They... I don't think you could rage down out of bear form when your your entire Archit city gets burnt to the ground as a as a Bayorning. I don't know. So anyway, it's it's interesting. Um, hopefully, we'll see more, so we don't have to do this kind of crazy speculation every week <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> but well, um, this is the big news for this week. <laughs> How many of you on this call are gonna purchase this day one? I probably am. I think I am. It, I still have to see a little bit more, um, but I think I probably will. At the very, at the very least, probably just to. I'm definitely going to play it in the beta and see if I like it or not, mm -hmm. and that'll probably give me the best decision on if I am going to buy it or not. I will, depending on price too. It depends. The, what price, the price does matter too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because right. um, I've been more of a. I call myself a hardcore extreme casual, um, so I'm I'm taking my sweet time through the game. I haven't even purchased uh, Helm's Deep. Speaking of which, is me being on the show like getting me out of that contest? <laughs> 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 I forgot to ask that, but um, oh, you yeah, should have so asked that I, before I mean, the contest. Yeah. Before you came, <laughs> <laughs> darn! Uh, you should have appeared so, after the contest rather than before. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the whole thought of a, a purchasing a Bjorning class, I'm like. Eh, Maybe someday, but like I haven't, I haven't even done a PvP yet. So it's like I'm, I, I find it exciting that they're still developing the game, but this is so far off my radar that I'm like I'm not even gonna. I wasn't nerding out over the text or the tweet. Well, <laughs> your needs are level one, so you know. yeah, yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of work, but um, if the class is interesting enough, I think I'll definitely try to try to level it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. We'll see. I'm sure there'll be. There's a good chance of there being a finely flazed Bjorning. Um, probably. Um, Etelkles from the chat asks any thoughts on the price. So I want to go around the table here and have everyone give their prediction price of what they think Turbine will make the price. Not what you want, but what you think Turbine will make the price. Um, and let's start with Sithrith. Well, based on that, um, back when Sapiens was still. A thing, um, a person <laughs> that you know we talked about. Uh, based on what he said, or maybe it was Rowan. Uh, remember, I think there was a, ch maybe it was a shield run or a Tahiti run, something like that, where he said that, like they actually can make it less expensive now mm -hmm. because they're starting at level one, because they were going to charge like the price of a class plus the price of a. Uh, gift of the Valar. So that was going to be very expensive. Mm -hmm. So based on that, saying that they're going to make it less expensive now, I'm going to guess it's going to be between 1,000 and 1,500 turbine points. Okay. 
Anybody else have a different prediction? Well, let's see. Well, mine, I was going to say 1495, but that's okay. within her range. It's on the high end of her range. That's, I'm, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. I'm thinking between 1495 and 1995. I, because the two Moria classes had been out for a long time, I could see them saying, well, this is a new class, so we're going to add on an extra 500. I could see that happening. I Well, I mean, this I mean, the Runekeeper and Warden right now are 795, right? No, I thought they were for I thought they were at least more than they used I'm back when I sure. bought them. They were uh 1495 a piece. I don't know what they are now. Um <laughs> <laughs> pretty I'm sure pretty typing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're 7.95. Yeah. Okay. So uh, they have. So they did half the price essentially <laughs> since when the market came up. So. I think for me it will either be 995 if they're being generous or mm -hmm. 19.95. Yeah. Either one. I just had a funny thought. Think of try to picture a Bjorning on like a, a war goat running through Bree. <laughs> oh no. Bay riding a goat. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> That's gonna happen. You know it's gonna happen. And you know there's gonna be the little the little Huron following it around and all that stuff. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, well, just in case on that, I have reserved two thousand points for the Bjorning, so you know, that does not surprise me in the slightest, finally, knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we'll go on into speaking of purchasing things, store sales. Drac! Free sample of the week, October 3rd through the 9th, the Relic Removal Scroll. You get one of those per account, so choose wisely with the coupon code SRR98. SRR98. The sale this week is all about PVMP. 25% off the following monster classes, monster traits, monster skills, and the 100% infamy renown gain. So, kind of a eh sale, I guess, unless you <laughs> are a premium and you want to do some PVMP, I guess. But I'm not excited about the sale. <laughs> It's not an ally sale, so is that. It could be worse. <laughs> it could be way worse. It could involve epic battles in some form or fashion. So, yeah. <laughs> the, day that there's, the day that there's an epic battle sale is the day that Drac probably ends the store sales. <laughs> That's right. It's like, I'm done. I'm out. Well, somebody <laughs> else can do it. I'm out. Yet, why? You'll give, just get them down to everything. Well, this is true. But I kind of do that all the way. <laughs> anyway, so it kind of wouldn't be fun to do it on a store sale post, though. Oh, well. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose, oh, I epic suppose. Epic battles. <laughs> All right, let's go to the player's news, and we'll begin with a Helm's Deep Premium Edition giveaway for anyone out there who just loves epic battles. <laughs> or really good story <laughs> involving Helm's Deep, but... Um... <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you could do it for that, too. But, uh, yeah, basically, people still have until October 7th, so a few more days left to enter this contest. All you have to do is leave a comment on the YouTube video to enter. It's very simple. And, um, basically, on October 7th, the contest will close. I'll choose a winner, and they'll have a week to respond, and if they don't, it'll go on to a new winner, because I don't want the code to be sitting in somebody's inbox. But, um, yeah, we're getting close to the end of this contest, so... If you have not entered yet, be sure to uh, head over there. And once again, even if you just want to surprise a friend with it for Christmas or something like that, um, feel free to go ahead and enter the contest. It doesn't have to be just for you. So feel free to do that. All right, very well. And now we ask, what is your favorite added system to Lotro? And I suspect that... Track is not going to answer epic battle, so <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a good chance that Drac did not answer epic battles. Um, basically, it in like this too many people did. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. 
In, in this <laughs> week's poll, we did ask people what their favorite system that has been added to the game was. And the top answer, because Sithrith probably campaigned for it, is cosmetics. <laughs> in that case, someone was being from, uh, campaigning really hard for allies. <laughs> this is true, yeah. because uh, with 53 votes, there was cosmetics. Uh, with 19% of the vote, at 34 votes, there was skirmishes. And with 16% of the vote, 30 votes, legendary items. Okay. Wow. Some masochists Surprising. out there. Although in the chat, Barnabas says, Barnabas says L.I. is his favorite, so... Maybe you can explain why. Or maybe he was going to talk about how depressed he was by allies, and so he just couldn't finish the rest of the sentence. We we don't know for sure. You just said ally, and then exactly. We don't know if he that. likes him or not. There's there's no telling. Uh, <laughs> uh, with yeah, uh, twenty. But if you like allies, please explain why to us. Wait, then he pressed enter by accident. That's possible. You could have accidentally selected the wrong one. You know. Just you could have been blindfolded and had to select an maybe answer. Maybe he accidentally, maybe he misread favorite and thought I said, "What is your least favorite added system?" Barnabas <laughs> says best on that list. Okay, um, it'd be I was nice to know why. Didn't have hobnanigans on this list. Uh, There's good uh, reason well, for that's that. That's not quite a system. That's, that's not a that. system. <laughs> I mean, if fishing I mean, is it's a, a system, system for. Well. Hobby is hobby a... sister. It's just that fishing is the only hobby. But it yeah, is I did. I sister. did take a liberty by only calling it hobby as kind of a joke because it's not hobbies. There's only one. Come on, turbine. Uh, that did get two votes. Epic battles got four votes. Phasing Why? got 19 votes. Only about 10% of the vote. Uh, I was hoping it'd get a little bit more. Uh, mounted combat also got 10% of the vote with 19 votes, and housing got 11% with 20 votes. So, very well, close between like housing, mounted like combat, allies. and phasing. You guys are crazy. You must be in some kind of crazy <laughs> minority. Yeah, I can't believe that people like allies more than phasing being added to the game, because there's so much that that did to the game. And the mounted combat as well, while it might get old after a while, just the system itself has not been done in any other game. I think the and chat room wants to... Mutiny us and it does. Chat room saying allies. that they demand allies. Um, they voted allies. Chat room apparently likes allies. Um, okay. If you guys <laughs> should make your own <laughs> ally players news show. <laughs> <laughs> when did they actually introduce phasing? That was with, uh, with Isengard. Um, volume three, the beginning of it was because mm -hmm. they used it in the first like couple of books. But it was really in Rise of Isengard that they kicked off. Okay. And that's that's when um, there's that one uh, village where there's like the the orc standing in front of the door or whatever. Uh, and they use Trev, yeah. Yeah, they use phasing for that. So yeah, it's they've really, especially with Helm's Deep, took it to a whole nother level. And I can't. I really hope that they continue to use it a lot to, moving forward. Because so far it seems like they only use it in like one town and that's kind of it. I, I want to see like an entire zone be phased. That'd be pretty cool. An entire zone would be tough to phase, wouldn't it? Uh, They're probably. Better it though, so. It'd probably be pretty tough, yeah, but, but I still, mean... But it still creates in, invisible uh, things and stuff like that, which is the... Zinger was saying <laughs> that if we can't open tapping and auto looting as a system, then that's his vote. Ah, uh, I forgot about open tapping. Oh well. They kind of merged together too, since they both came with the same. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that is a really structure. good improvement to the game. I yeah, think. it was. That is one I really did like. Yeah. Totally forgot about that one. Oh well. <laughs> that <laughs> allies probably would have still beat it. So. Oh well. <laughs> this way we don't know. It's security. Hmm. All right. <laughs> All right. Then let's go on then to. Scout's Honor Part 1, A Burglar's Guide to the Quiet Knife. And, Sithrith, could you talk about this? Why do I always get tasked with talking about these articles I haven't read? <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can take it if you want, Sithrith. I Sithrith. read this because I don't have a burglar, and honestly, I don't have interest in a burglar. I apologize, this, Kaylee, <laughs> but... This... this did not spark your interest? <laughs> well, you play a big I I can take this if you guys want. Um, this was actually by far our most popular article we've had in a while. 
And it's because it was a really, really well done guide on the burglar. And it also explains why it's referred to as the scout by Carline. So <laughs> there's um, all sorts of great stuff about this. It goes through the quiet knife and all the different skills there. And they have images of every single one with little descriptions about every single skill. Some more detailed than others depending on how important the skill is. And there's also all sorts of LI notes and various things like that. And this is only part one of the guide because it's only going through the quiet knife line. Um, I'm guessing that there's still going to be at least two more going through the other lines as well. So I'm, I'm very excited for this. And um, if you know a class very well um, and you want to write a guide for it, feel free to write into Locher Players. We'd love to feature your class guides on our site. That's something that we um, have wanted to do for a while. Um, but just haven't had enough people interested on our site to do it. So um, Itocles and some other people were talking about maybe um, starting up some guides as well. So if uh, you're interested in that, feel free to uh, send an email to contact at loacherplayers.com with uh, your guide and uh, get featured on the site. All right. Now, do these quiet knife burglars go after zebra cats? Um, I don't know, but that was a good segue if they do. <laughs> There's finally, a big the if there, though, pro. finally. <laughs> yes. Pro, finally. Our last episode of Locho Player's Adventures, episode 33. Well, not our last, our most recent. Well. Yes, okay, most recent. <laughs> yes, oh, sorry, not that. <laughs> it was titled Zebra Cats, meaning, of course, our old oh, friend Saber Tooth. Yes. Depending <laughs> on where you're cats, from, yeah. If you are from Wales. <laughs> So yeah, we had a lot of fun going through some of the uh, Road to Erebor raids. Um, Your definition of fun is a little off handing. Yeah, I don't know if that's... At the very least, our audience had fun watching us suffer. One of the two happened, so... Now that <laughs> maybe yeah, is what more. happened. <laughs> that's more accurate. Alright, but um, anyway, it's a good episode, so... I recommend, uh, especially if you haven't done the raids. I cannot check hear out. you. Yeah, yeah Thoros, yeah. can you mute your mic, please? Thanks. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, it's a really good uh, episode um, that goes through uh, the different raids, especially if you haven't ever seen the raids. I'd recommend uh, watching this episode. All right. Somebody seriously needs. To do it. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like the Langoliers are coming. <laughs> Someone will have to explain that to me at some point. It uh, just got awkward in here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very well. We shall. Speaking of awkward transitions. Yes. Have you for, ha, have you finished with Zebra Cat since I had trouble hearing the last? Yep, I have. Let's continue on to. Very well. Let's go into the fashion maven. And I know Sithrith read this article. I need to take myself off mute. That was awesome. <laughs> um, yes, I <laughs> I definitely read this article, and I I commented on the article also. Um, basically, the article is about the Fashion Maven, which was a um, kind of event person thing that turbine would sometimes happen. Um, basically, they'd be like, "Hey, the Fashion Maven is going to be out and about on the servers." If the fashion maven sees you and thinks you're fashionable or whatever, you will get a title. Um, you can get the fashionable, the unfashionable, or the eyesore based on what you look like. Um, there's a lot of contention around the fashion maven, and they haven't done the fashion maven in quite a few years, possibly because of the contention. Um, basically, a lot of the problems was like it was such a vague event. It was like the Fashion Maven was basically a single GM or developer, it was never really clear, um, that would go around to the servers on a given weekend um, and go to populated areas and pick people. The problem was people didn't know where. It could be Breland, it could be Rivendell, it could be Galtrev, it could be 21st Hall. It, it was never like specifically said, go to this location. Um, it could be any time of the day. It could be when you're asleep that the person ends up coming to your server. Um, I know people, many people who spent 
hours and hours and hours standing in populated areas during these fashion maven events waiting and waiting and waiting for the fashion maven to appear and never found them so i thought the fashion maven was always invisible anyway some people saw a gm or claim to have seen a gm during uh, these events. like they saw bigfoot or something like that yeah i mean that's the thing like <laughs> it's such like it's this event has kind of grown to weird and epic urban legend kind of proportions yeah. so it's hard to just be sure what has actually happened if people have actually seen the gm or if they just got the title in the mail <laughs> because there's so many different conflicting accounts mm -hmm. is that what the horseshoe is for <laughs> oh gosh it is that's now another thing <laughs> it is now that's right that well played thank you drag Yes. <laughs> so people got very, I know a lot of people got very grumpy about the Fashion Maven of an event because there's no clear cut way to know when you can get the title. Like I know there's, there's rare titles for doing certain things in instances. There's rare titles for like seeing, like going and meeting a turbine employee and getting like the well-met title. But, like that's like, you know, if you get, if like, you go to PAX and they're there, you can get the title. Whereas like this, it's like, I may or may not see a GM or it might be invisible, and it might just happen while I'm asleep anyways, because it's impossible to tell, because this GM has to go to 29 different servers, and you don't know how long they're going to be on a server at a given time anyway, and how many, if there's like a limit on how many titles they can give out per server. No answers. I When I was on the player council, I actually specifically asked about this, and Sapiens never responded, so we still don't know. Don't you think, though, that the game needs some of these mysterious you know, things that are just almost unobtainable to keep them special. Yeah, it's almost uh, kind of no. like I I kind of <laughs> do. <laughs> I mean, well, that was direct. Trust, trust me, I mean, I'm I, I'm taking a complete completionist route, but I realize that there's going to be a, a laundry list of things that I'm never even going to try to attempt or get. You know. I kind of do, just I because mean, that's kind of like Tolkien, where there's a little bit of mystery about stuff. Now, stuff like the horseshoe is very forced and not at all like Tolkien, but um, you know, it's it's nice to have like some some urban legend type stuff or online I legend I think type stuff. For me personally, to, uh, go ahead. For me personally, the most frustrating thing in the game is like not having a clear cut way of getting something or like being like, oh, it's a mystery. Like, no, just. I want to know how I can get it. Even if I know it's something I can't personally do, like knowing that there is a way to get it, like Hobnanigans, it's like I know I'm never going to get those chicken pets because it's just obnoxious and I'm not going to do it. But like I know that there is a way for me to do it. If I really applied myself, I could get it. But like with this, it's like you could apply yourself. People applied themselves for hours trying to get this title and they didn't just because it's sheer luck, chance, whatever. I think with these sort of mystery things, they can be good. It's just you have to sort of balance between the mystery aspect and then trying not to cheese players off too much with having that sort of random, are you going to get this or not type of thing. Obviously, the Maven seemed to eventually become too much the one way and people didn't like it as a result. Yeah, and also Clover left, so... Well, yes, that's... Well, happened, I don't think Clover so. was the person, because the Fashion Maven did come out after Clover left. Hmm. At least once. Maybe so. it used to be Clover, and then the new person just kind of tried to start it, but didn't. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. I know Deviled Egg is in charge of cosmetics now, or at least was as of, like, a few months ago. She's been in charge of a lot of things. Yeah. As a lawmaster, I can say things on that, but I won't. <laughs> You're a master on lore. <laughs> All right. Anything else about the Fashion Maven? Then our highlight this week is I am Warden. <laughs> it's not that was semi-terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> like I've said before, every now and then I shake in my boots because you know Pine Leaf can be pretty terrifying. So 
Um, yes, finally, for this week, the video highlight of the week was The Lord of the Rings Online, I Am Warden. And um, this is possibly one of the most epic trailers of class that you will see ever. It's incredible, and um, especially if you're a fan is of The Warden. Is it better than the Bjorning trailer? We haven't seen the Bayorning trailer yet, Pineleaf. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know yet. They're, they could go all out with that, and that could you know trump that. But as of right now, in the current state of the game, um, this this does seem to be an amazing trailer. So especially if you're a Warden okay. fan, I recommend checking this out. I think the it's people who made this video stuff. also... Yes. <laughs> I think... Uh... The people who made this video also made an I Am Loremaster video. Yes, if I and correctly. a Hunter one, and those are coming up later in the uh, highlights. But you can check out uh, Evan Artworks YouTube channel if you want to see those, because those are really epic trailers as well. All right, very well. Then we will head into Lotro outfits, and I know Sithrith knows about this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this <laughs> this outfit is for my lore master because she is now entering Moria. Um, I hit a hundred episodes on my lore master series, nice. and that was just in time to start Moria. So I made a Moria outfit. It's all uh, blacks and dark grays, and also um, kind of muted purples and golds because. The blacks and the grays are like the shadows, and you know it's dark because it's Moria. And then the purples and the golds are reminiscent of the, uh, you know, Durin banners, the long beard Durin banners everywhere in Moria, and the purple crystals and just generally all the gold that's in Moria. Um, so yeah, that's that outfit. All right, then we'll head on to. Braxis pick of the week, but he's not. T oh, that's right. DJ, did you have a pick for this week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, little blindsided. Um, apparently, <laughs> there's an article out here called A Wizard for Himself Part 2. <laughs> uh, I just now opened up. Let's skim. Uh, let's see. Last minute thing here. Something about a gray arrival, the White Council. <laughs> right. That's actually our new I'll just read the Lotro. first one. It says, This week we'll continue our series on the White Wizard and one of the greatest villains of Middle Earth. So um, I'm assuming this is all about wizardry. Yes. Uh, and um, yeah, so. There's some in... pictures. It looks good. I'll give it an A. Uh, <laughs> yes. And. Uh, uh. That has been uh, one of our weekly uh, articles for uh, Lore by Iogro, and um, they always do a great job uh, covering the lore and always have fantastic like concept arts, paintings, and stuff like that of various points in the lore. And um, so yeah, this is actually going behind um, one of the, well, actually the White Wizard. So um, pretty pretty cool lore, and um, it looks like that there's going to be several more of. Uh, Wizard lore episodes. Yes. So in this case, so we we all know that he bids five. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Boiler, of alert, course. <laughs> Boiler alert! Spoiler <laughs> alert! <laughs> all right. Gonna have to read this later. <laughs> Very well. Let's go into donations. Let's give a big thanks to Brittany for her $10 or more donation to Lotro Players. I love listening to the podcast whilst playing Lotro. Thank you for the hours of enjoyment. Cheers! And cheers to you, Brittany. Thank you so much for donating. And also a big thanks to Lauren and Everwolf for their $10 or more donation to Lotro Players. Yeah, thank you guys so you much. And if you would like to help support Locha Players, you can simply go to the donation page where you can help support the podcast of Locha Players and also help support the site. We have $5 and $10 mentions where you can donate and get a mention on one or all of our active podcasts for an episode depending on the amount. For $5, you get a mention on the podcast of your choice. For $10 or more, you get a mention on all of our active podcasts. As for feedback... Barnabas has given us a five-star review on iTunes. 
a great show, never miss it. Information news is given in a very accessible way. Keeps you up to date on what's going on and plenty of laughs to boot. <laughs> and we also have some comments. First we have Sarithi Bukamp who left a comment on the Bjorning art image article and Etheros. Uh, sure. Let me unmute myself then. Uh, <laughs> too tall to be a dwarf, but too thick to be a man. Just <laughs> highlights how Bjornings really should be a race and not a class. A race with only one possible class, but still a race. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. Although they might end up doing it like that. <laughs> Never know. Because I'm not sure if, like, the way they're actually going to put it in the character creation, whether you... Because you are actually asked to select your race. They've first. they've actually stated that Didn't it is going to be. They stated it's going to be a race and a class, and that was actually uh, reconfirmed in the uh, Corey Olson uh, talk that they had with you know, oh, the talking okay. professor and Chris Pearson. Yeah, they actually say, did. Yeah, Chris Pearson was... did say that it is going to be a race and a class. So. Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Well, well if they're going to have their own starter experience, I guess that makes sense. That's, mm -hmm. that's divided by. Mm -hmm. by it's going to be a crease. A crease! <laughs> yes. And hopefully not a curse. It's going to be a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> the Bayorning hobby. There you go. <laughs> All right. And we also have. We also have an email from Elindomir. Elindomir? I, I think that's, I think you mean Kane. Kane from Elindomir, since Elindomir is the name of a server. Probably. Yes. <laughs> All right, yes. Kane from Elindomir has sent us an email, and ending, you could read it. Oh, well, thank you, Pineley, for, you know, just passing that on. Um, so, I have been a lifetime subscriber since launch, and played in the beta. However, I rushed cap with my Guardian, maxed weaponsmithing, and then, feeling incredibly burnt out, a mere couple months after the fact, I have only come back off and on since recently I got the bug again, and I've heard about plugins, something I have never messed with before, and I am not sure where to begin. Most lists recommend plugins are several years old, and the Lotro Academy podcast on the subject is from 2011. It, se it all seems a little complex, and I don't want to go off of these lists and find myself having issues because the plugins are outdated, etc. Long story short, what plugins would you guys recommend in 2014, and are any of the Warden plugins worthwhile? I have been finding the class a lot of fun to play, and it has been my main character to log in with of late. Kane, Dwarf Guardian, from Elindomir. Titan Bar. Indeed, yeah, Titan, Titan Bar is a good one. Well, Titan and Bar is a good one, but it has not been updated recently. So there are some, um, a couple of elements of it. The things like the reputation elements is starting to get outdated since oh, yeah. it doesn't include the most recent factions. I mean, you just use it for the currency. Um, yeah, the currency yeah, stuff, the yeah, currency. that that's all still works. In fact, I use Titan Bar myself. That I'm being able to see when the time of day changes is just nice. Yeah, I use that time of day thing like, religiously for my outfit videos because, if, you know, if I need to record <laughs> something at a certain time of day, I need to know when it's, you know, how much longer I have to wait until okay, it's yeah. going to be. All right, I haven't used that. Let's see. Now, one of the things that I use all the time is buff bars. And mm -hmm. that's the one. That's a good one, too. Buff bars and Titan bar are the two biggest items I use. I use something called C time, but I only use that because I wanted the time to the seconds, and Titan bar only gives it to the minute. For most people, you could probably use the clock that's on on Titan Bar and get away with that. This explains a lot about the countdown timer on Mixler. <laughs> <laughs> Heinleaf likes his countdowns. <laughs> he likes his countdowns. Yes. And those... It's on my minstrel for the band, 
but I know that doesn't help Warren as much. But when I'm doing bands, of course, there's a there's a plugin called Songbook that I use, and I probably most serious local musicians mm -hmm. use that. Uh, let's see. And while not technically a plugin, I use the large the large preview paint for the cosmetics. Yep, I I've got the the, mm -hmm. the room, the dressing room. Yes, the large dressing room. Mm. I, I use that because, well, it's a lot larger because that's why you have this little tiny little window mm. which you're looking at things. So those are the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. As for Warden plugins, I do not use any at this time. I just, I don't know, I just, and just the, I think I might have tr tried one briefly or something like that, but I've just never got into using any Ward plugins. I just use the stuff that Turbine provides. All right. Now, I, I um, I just rolled an Alt Warden this week, and this is the first time I've ever played one. And I, I, it to me, it seems like the, the Gambit panel seems pretty you know easy to pick up and it's <laughs> so far it seems to do the job well so and uh zinger from the chat does mention the plugin compendium which is very helpful in setting up plugins so um i would recommend that as well all right <laughs> yeah i don't yeah that the plugin compendium i I've, I've not really used that one so i just basically use the turbine manager and that's it. That's pretty mm -hmm. good, yeah. But yeah, it just gives you but options. I, I, yeah, I think that the compendium, I think the compendium might be something that handles it or the DOS end, isn't it? Rather than a plugin itself. Yeah, I believe so. Um, one thing I would recommend is you know don't be afraid. You're not going to break the game. You know, try out different plugins and see what you like. Um, there's a few sites that uh, are good for helping out find out plugins. I don't remember them off the top of yeah. my head, but they are mentioned in the Lotro Academy episode. So yeah. Now there is oh yes, there is there's also one, the Daily Tasks helper, which mm -hmm. I use all the time. Mm. In which I am able to go and grab the information as to where what items am I holding pertain to the nearest task board or to some other task board I could ask, but, but, I, but I'm usually using it to go with whatever's the nearest one. That way I know what tasks I have available, what I could turn in, then I could just, with that information, i go to the task board and handle all that stuff and not worry about it, since I never pick up a task quest until I'm ready to turn it in. Hmm. Good suggestion. All right. Anyone else have any other plugins? I think we're good. Very well. Then we'll go on to an origin story from Barnabas. Actually, well, actually I think, I think we have the, another yeah. email finally. Oh. We actually had three emails this By week. Kazrin. Oh, Kazrin, let's see. <laughs> okay, I guess <laughs> I had missed that. All right. Kazrin wrote us an email. Hi, Lotro players. I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate the show. I love Mystery. I hope Mystery is feeling better. <laughs> Your discussion about lore versus turbine creation was very interesting. Thank you for a great show. Kazrin of Tolkien. Kazrin, a.k.a. Tolkien. We broke, we broke Pine We did. We broke Pine Leaf. That's, that's what happened. Uh, now we can go into Barnabas's origin story. Pineleaf can only ha process two emails in a single episode. That's just This is proof <laughs> that he can't handle three. Um, but yeah, it's cool. We had three email. emails this week. We've never had that before. Thank you guys so much All for having right. Very well. Who would like to volunteer and read this week's origin story? I think Brax should read it since it's about Brax. And uh, ah. since Brax isn't here, I think the alternative version of Brax should read it. <laughs> Hayes the new guy, huh? 
<laughs> yeah, he's the new guy, right? Uh, I don't know if I'm up for singing this, but I will gladly read it if you would like. <laughs> uh, Barnabas sent in his origin story for Brax. He said, "Hello, Lotra players. I have a song parody for Brax. It is sung to Guns and Roses. Welcome to the jungle." It must be sung in an Axel Rose voice. <laughs> now, being a Cincinnatian, you know, we got the Bengals, so I hear the song quite a lot. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> do you seriously want me to sing this? You don't have to sing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm Our not going to sing it. So. Sing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 odd that like I'm okay standing in front of a crowd of like a thousand people and sing hip hop music, but for some reason it just gives me anxiety trying to think about singing Guns N' Roses. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, <clears throat> welcome to the Braxwood. He plays Lotro games. He's got every plank you want. Pine Leaf doesn't even know his name. He's the hunter that can find whatever you may need. If you got the Brax Bucks, buddy, he can cure your disease. It's in the Brax, or I'm sorry, in the Braxwood. Welcome to the Braxwood. Watch it bring you to your trees, trees. <laughs> <laughs> I got a crit and e get extra bleed. <laughs> Welcome to the Braxwood. He'll be late today. If you're an orc, you're going to bleed, but that's the price you pay. And you're a very deadly troll that's very hard to kill. You could take the big crits, if, uh, but you won't get them for free in the Braxwood. Welcome to the Braxwood. Feel my 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 extra life dream. I want to hear you break your bowspring scream. Hey, I almost got that wrong. Um, welcome to the Braxwood. It gets here every day, or gets better here every day. You'll learn to live like a wolf in the Braxwood where we play. If you got a hunter for what you see, or hunger for what you see, you'll take it eventually. You could only, or you could have any table you want, but you better not take it from me. <laughs> Which that is an awesome line. That is an awesome yeah, line. <laughs> and when you're in the clan, you never ever want to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this keeps going. He did every lyric for this. He did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this must have taken a long time. Uh, You'll know where you are. You're in the Braxwood Oakery. Is that Oakery? Orky. 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 Okay. <laughs> You're going to die in the Braxwood. Welcome to the Braxwood. Watch it bring you to your t -t 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 trees. <laughs> in the Braxwood. Welcome to the Braxwood. Feel my, my extra life dream. In the Braxwood. Welcome to the Braxwood. Watch it bring you to your t -t -t trees. In the Braxwood. <laughs> Welcome to the Braxwood. Watch it chop you down. Watch you chop you. Watch, watch it chop you, you to your. It's gonna cut you down. Ha! <laughs> Guitar <laughs> wang. <laughs> oh. This this needs to be a video format. So now, if you want to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's hard to sing this without the music playing. So that is if, true. I, I, I challenge you guys this. If someone could send me uh, a Lotro ABC of them playing the song, I'll, I'll, I'll mix in the audio and I'll send it back and you can play it next oh, week. Oh, wow. But... <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, Lil' Kate, you heard it. Maybe I could fire up my old Braxwood and actually uh, record some in game footage of him, like, you know, chopping trees and riding on horses and stuff. But. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, people in chat are really saying, you know you're singing it in your like head, and I am, so. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, very well. Thank you, and thank you for the origin story, and thank you for providing us with your rendition of it. If you wish to contact us, you could email us at podcast at lotroplayers.com and you can also follow us at Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Ally, Lotro Players at Lotro Players, and Dang at PVMP underscore and Dang, Braxwolf at Braxwolf, Sithrith at Sithrith, Draculetta at Draculetta underscore 72, Etheros at Etheros, Lily Kate at Lily Kate Buggins, Mystery at Mystery XOX, Pineleaf at Pineleaf Needles, and the alternate Braxwolf at 
BJ Pimp Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> the right. The Players Alliance has two live shows on Mondays at 8:30 p.m. United States Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News and on Saturdays at 8:30 p.m. United States Eastern Time, we have Locho Players News. And you can join us for our live shows at lochoplayers.com slash live. And you can also join us on Langeville for Locho Players Adventures every Saturday at 5 p.m. United States Eastern Time, also known as Server Time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And that's all for tonight. And this is Pine Leaf Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>